Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial. This time we will create the ink swell ability used by Grimstroke. Just to clarify things, we are going to be recreating the mechanic itself and not the visuals as that will make this video way too long. Let's get into it. Here we are in my project that I have already set up to recreate this ability. I have a plane scale up to 10 with a mesh collider and a checker material. A game object that contains all my enemies. These enemies have the tag of enemy with the sphere collider and a rigid body using gravity and freezing the rotations. Since the enemy itself is a sphere, I don't want them to rotate because that would make them roll away and we want them to stand still. Then I have a camera as a child of my player so that it follows him and the player game object itself is pretty much the same as the enemy but it also has a controller in it that allows me to move the character on all directions. Alright, nothing too fancy here. Just a simple scene with a controller and enemies. Now that you know what's in the scene, let's begin. Create an empty game object. Name it Inkswell, then create a sphere game object and name it Area Damage. Make it a child of our Inkswell and remove the sphere collider from it. Create a new transparent material. I'm going to go with a transparency of... 80 is fine. Then give this material to the Area of Damage game object. Set its scale to be 0 since we will change this with our script later. Create another sphere and call it Area Visual. Remove its sphere and set its scale to 0. Create a new particle system as a child of our inkswell and call it end FX. Set its shape to a circle and change the rotation to 90 degrees on the X axis. Lower the radius to 0.5 so that it fits our circle perfectly. And then remove the rate over time to add a burst of 50 particles. Duration and lifetime to 1 second. Start speed to random between two very low values. Remove the looping and make sure play on awake is enabled. Under color over lifetime, make it fade in and out. I'm going to lower the start size a bit. Then go down to shape again and set the radius thickness to zero so that they spawn on the outside part of the circle. Lastly, set its scale to zero and then add a script called Inkswell to start coding it. First thing we do here is set up our variables. We'll need a few floats. Some of them are pretty self-explanatory, but if you do not quite understand what they will be doing, you will know when we start using them in our code. Then we will need a public transform that it is hidden in the inspector. This one we will set it once we spawn the inkswell prefab. Down here we will need two transforms for our area visual and area of damage game objects, and lastly a reference of type game object for our end effects. Down here add 3 floats and a vector 3 to control the scale of our visuals. Inside start we need to set the scale to be the radius times 2 because units are somewhat arbitrary in unity and for some reason one unit in c -sharp code equals to 2 units in unity. The y value I'm setting it to be something really low so that it is a flat sphere. You can change this to even lower if you like. Then reference our game objects we created earlier and set their scale accordingly. Inside update, we set the position of our inkswell to be the position of whatever we want it to follow, then do a check to see if the duration is bigger than zero and then lower the duration over time. We do the same with our tick value and increase the t float using delta time divided by the save duration so that we can later use this to scale our area visual using vector3.lerp. Go down here and create two new functions, one called tick and another explode. Call the tick function if our tick is smaller than zero and also call the explode function if our duration is smaller than zero. Cool. Inside tick we will assign the tick value to be the tick interval which we can set in the inspector later. Add a float called addition that it is equal to zero. Get all colliders inside our radius and check if these colliders have the tag of enemy. 
and then inside here we increase the addition using the value increase per tick variable we will set in the inspector later. Now this part I cannot tell you how to do it since every project is different but here you will damage your enemies. I don't have an enemy script on this project so I will have to comment this out. Lastly here we add the addition to the value. Inside explode we will need to yet again get all colliders and check for the enemy tag. Here you will stun them using the value variable we are increasing inside the tick function. Since I do not have an enemy script to handle stuns, I'm going to do something different. I will push units away. So first we get the rigid body then calculate the direction to push the target. Before we can use the value variable we have to clamp it so that it does not go over the maximum value. Cool. Now I will add a force to the rigid body using the impulse force mode. After we've done all of that, we simply destroy the ink swell. Lastly, down here at the bottom, I'm just going to add a Ondra Gizmos so that we can see the AOE inside our scene window. Awesome! For spawning the ink swell, go to your player controller script and add a new public game object variable called inkswell prefab. And under update, check if we press space, we create the prefab. And if you remember, inside the Inkswell script, we have this transform that has not been assigned. So we do that once we create the prefab like this. All done coding. Let's hop back into Unity. Drag your Inkswell game object into your project folder to create a prefab and then assign this prefab to your player controller script like this. Select your prefab and let's set some of these variables. The value is the one that gets increased over time and we use this in my case to push enemies away. Their radius, duration and maximum value are pretty self-explanatory. The tick interval is how often it will call the tick function so point 0.1 will call the function 10 times in one second. If you set this to 1 then it will be called just once every second. Damage per tick is used inside the tick function to damage your enemies and value increase per tick is how much we are increasing it inside the tick function. Let's hit play and try it out. I'm going to move here so only two are inside my radius. And voila! They're all inside, then boom! They get pushed further away because there are more units inside therefore the value is increased faster per tick. And that is it for this tutorial guys. Now go add some visual effects and play around with the values to better fit your game. All project files are available in my Patreon as always. I hope this was useful for you. See you guys in the next video.